So this is the second part of a video on the PSV 500 extra scanning vibrometer, scanning laser vibrometer, and we got the software running and uh, opened a few windows. I'm able to go to the uh, Explorer drop-down, and you can create a new folder. Uh, we've got a PSV data upper level. This is my documents essentially, so we'll probably avoid using my documents. But if you go to PSV data. You can go to Windows Explorer here and create yourself a new folder in here um, as you wish for and give it a name obviously that's sensible and that's where you can save your projects. Since we've already got a training video, a training folder, I'll use the training folder and you'll see that there are a series of training, uh, training projects already with it, open within their um, metal plate phantom propeller cantilever beam. Okay, actually this particular project previously has some measurements in, it, in the Marley folder and this is the Marley fan blade so but for the sake of this uh, exercise today we're just going to call it a training video. Alright, so we can, um, we've got a new project and anything that we then subsequent when we create data or save so if I just tip start scanning you'll see that it wants to firstly save the scan data video, uh, file where, where we'll ultimately keep like, our measurements and the results that we process will end up um, being stored. So there's already a scan in there because someone's just gone with the default, but best to give it a name that is you know, meaningful. Um, so, and typically we would sort of start with the date because it will sort by date. Um, it looks like somebody's got a convention in here. These were ones that were done previously. So it's the 2nd of March 2022. Um, Marley short blade. All right, so just we'll go with that. And I've sometimes defined the chirp frequency range, things of this nature. It doesn't matter what the file name is, but use a file name that allows you to understand what it is that you've set up with the measurement, okay? Um, it's now scanning, although these are the points, if I zoom in on this one, these are the points that somebody had set up on a previous time that this was run, a small structure down here, so they're completely meaningless, they're somewhere on the floor, but the vibrometer doesn't know initially what the difference is, so what I'm normally going to do is actually um, go to the point definition icon here, do a control A to select all of these existing points, um, uh, right click and, uh, sorry, edit and just delete. So I can delete all of those points using the delete button and um, they've gone. Now I want to do, actually I'm going to go back and do a 2D alignment. So this blade is relatively flat, we're going to consider it to be two dimensional. There is also a 3D alignment option which we can do for curved structures where there is some depth and there's an inbuilt geometry scanning laser and that will allow us to you know, uh, essentially create a 3D geometry uh, for our points and the image is basically just sort of overlaid on that, right? So the 2D alignment and 3D alignment is the process of associating the image from the video camera it's a video, it's live, um, with, uh, with, the de with the points or the point cloud which can have either two dimensions or three dimensions. Alright, so we, we can remove all the existing points by right clicking and saying delete all and then we will move the laser beam around onto the target of interest um, and probably best to go to one of, we've got some retroreflective markers on there which allow us to get good light. So when you get on a retroreflective marker, we can see we've got lots of light, it goes, it goes actually white, it's, it's, you know, there's lots of intensity coming back and it saturates the image. If I zoom in, you can see that quite nicely. All right, so we'll focus the laser by hitting the autofocus button. Um, and then our signal level, optical signal level goes a bit higher up here. So we're looking for at least, as a rule of thumb, like 50% optical signal level. Um, we can move the laser beam around a little bit on the target and you'll see that I can get, when I get the laser beam perfectly on that target and focused, I'm then getting lots of light back 
in the instrument and I get lots of optical signal levels so that's what we're aiming for. I can actually turn the laser off in software, I can turn the geometry laser on which is also red. I get a different indicator up here with the, this bar to tell me what the geometry laser, how good the geometry laser is you know, making an optical signal level measurement. Um, I can only have, have one or the other on. I can do manual focus, go further away, near, so if it doesn't do a very good job with autofocus I can deliberately zoom, zoom in, or, I, or sorry, zoom out or zoom in. But generally speaking, the autofocus is pretty good. The, the, occasionally the pointing just needs a little bit, well, pointing is controlled by these buttons down here. So because it's two dimensional, um, we'll set the focus pretty much once and then all the points that we define, we won't define points on all of these points on the blade, but just on some. One, in terms of 2D alignment, now I've got the laser beam on a position on the target, I should right click it. Uh, sorry, I actually left click it and you can see it creates this little cursor point here. Okay, and then I'm going to move it to another location somewhere else on the blade which might be you know, a, a reasonable distance away. There's, there's no sort of really hard and fast rules for this, it's a little bit of an art but we need at least three points on the blade in different parts of you know, the structure and like not just all in a line, it won't allow us to have all of these points in a line. Um, so I have to kind of move them around like this. And I, I, I at least need a triangle, right, of three points, but I might move this laser beam like all the way over here. There is a way, I think, to, if you press control, I think you can the right button, or I can't remember quite how to, maybe it's a middle click button. I can drag the laser beam around here. Yeah. So if I click it with the middle mouse button, you can see that I can grab hold of the laser beam and, and drag it around. At the moment, because we haven't done the 2D alignment, it might not exactly correspond when I click it, get hold of it with the cursor to the same point in the image. It's, it's only when we've done the 2D alignment that it will ideally go exactly where I click. So if I then deselect the 2D alignment button up here, it has now done in software very quickly the 2D alignment for us. Okay, so if I zoom out, I should now be able to click on a point and the laser beam goes, maybe not quite to the extremes where it loses it, but certainly in the middle of the image, towards the middle of the image, I click on a point, it should go to that, that location. Okay, you can see that as I move this around, left click, it goes to where I'm clicking it. That tells me that the 2D alignment is, is good. If I click on a point and the laser beam goes somewhere else nearby to that point, that means I've got poor 2D alignment, right? So now the image and the scanning system are aligned in two dimensions and we can start to do, uh, define points and do an acquisition.